Hello. This week we're going to switch gears a little bit. Uh, before we were talking about cybercrime, what cybercrime is, and some features of cybercrime. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about cybersecurity, how we attempt to prevent cybercrimes, um, and some things to think about. So the first thing I want you to realize is that cybercrimes happen uh, when cybersecurity fails. Uh, whenever we either don't plan for a certain event to take place, or we don't implement the security solution properly, or uh, we don't educate people in what they need to do, uh, what part they need to play. Um, so think about uh, cybersecurity as a first line prevention of cybercrime. If we didn't have cybersecurity, hackers could essentially come in and do whatever they wanted um, in, in much easier than they do now, let's say. Um, cybersecurity seeks to maintain confidentiality, uh, integrity, and availability. Um, there's a lot of different cybersecurity models, but this is a relatively well-established uh, um, model called the CIA model. Um, so confidentiality is essentially maintaining the privacy of the information that uh, you or an organization has. So in this case, we want to make sure that only the people who have access or permission to access the data can access the data. Um, hackers attempt to breach confidentiality to get things like credit card numbers of uh, users of a shopping mall, online shopping mall, or something like that. Um, in this case, we want to maintain confidentiality of all of our secret data, data that should not be available to the general public, um, or even sometimes to uh, employees in our companies or things like that. Um, the issue with confidentiality is that many organizations don't think about how much access do their users or their, uh, their employees need. Um, in that case, it gives too many people access or too much access to information, and then comp confidentiality is uh, somewhat um, attacked because of loose uh, internet, uh, information security policies. Um, there are a lot of different ways to attack confidentiality in systems. It really depends on what the attacker is trying to do. Um, but confidentiality is main, uh, maintaining the privacy or um, only access to the people who are authorized to have that access. Uh, next is integrity. And integrity is maintaining the consistency, accuracy, or trustworthiness of the data. So think about whenever I store data on my hard drive or I transfer data to another person, I want to make sure that that data um, is correct and accurate. I want to make sure that they receive exactly the information that I wanted to send them. Um, for example, email. If I send someone an email and I can't trust the path that that email is taking to whoever I sent it to, um, then maybe somewhere along that path, um, uh, words in the email were changed or even the entire body of the email was changed and whoever receives the email gets completely different information. Well, they're attacking the integrity of that, inf of that email. They're making it seem like I'm sending something that I'm not actually sending. Um, the integrity of the data on a hard drive, for example. I want to make sure that the, the data on the hard drive is the data that I expect to be there. I don't want that data to be modified in some way. Um, an, an example of that could be if I have a contract uh, in a file on my computer. If somebody can potentially get access to my computer and modify that contract without me knowing, um, then that contract has then been modified. Its integrity is no longer valid, but that contract might be legally binding in some senses if we can't prove that it was somehow manipulated. So integrity is making sure that the data that I either store or transmit is correct and accurate to what I wanted to, to uh, store or transmit. Uh, and availability. So availability ensures that the data can be accessed when it's needed by those who have permission to access that information. So uh, think about if you store a file on your hard drive, you want to be able to come back and get that file whenever you want it. But imagine that somebody was restricting you and you could only access it every Friday, the last Friday of the month. That would be very um, inconvenient for you and, and it wouldn't, um, you wouldn't, your, uh, the, the freedoms that you are being restricted um, uh, would be quite annoying, basically. You wouldn't be able to access your information, and in some cases it would cost you uh, business. Um, let's say you could only access your bank accounts at certain times. You could not transfer money, um, but you purchase something from someone um, and you can't actually pay for it. Well, in that case, it could cost you business. It could cost a lot of different things. So availability of services. Um, 
there's a lot of different ways, depending on what service or what data or information you're talking about to attack these services. Um, it could be just getting access to files. So right now there's uh, a type of virus that essentially encrypts all of your data and it's just removing the availability of those files and asking you to pay money to have them decrypted and to gain the availability back. Um, other types of attacks could be trying to uh, take down a website so that way they can't make sales online. As long as their website is down, their service is not available for users to purchase things on their website, so they lose money. And potentially a competitor gets those uh, sales and makes more money instead. Um, so confidentiality, integrity, availability is all about um, uh, whenever we attack those, we are taking away essentially the rights to access or um, uh, yeah, access the original data that we want to have access to and that we should have access to. Um, we want to make sure that we are always maintaining the availability, uh, integrity, and confidentiality of all of the information. And depending on the type of organization you are, or even an individual, um, if you think about confidentiality, integrity, and uh, availability of data, uh, it can go a long way into not only protecting yourself, but also protecting your organization. Um, if you're thinking a little bit more about, okay, what data is the most important to me and how do I maintain its integrity? Uh, how do I make sure that no one has access to it other than the people who, sh who sh should have access to it? Um, if you go in thinking like that, then you will already start to implement some basic security practices way more than, than most people do. Um, right. So cybersecurity normally involves locking down or hardening systems. So whenever we put a computer or any device online, if it's directly accessible on the internet, that means that every other device on the internet can potentially connect to our device. If our device is accessing or providing some sort of service, um, then that means that everyone online can access that service and potem potentially try to manipulate the service or the device in some way. Um, Whenever we try to harden the device, we're essentially going through and saying, okay, what services should actually be available to the public online and what type of access should they have to that? Um, a very, very basic example, example of hardening would be if I'm running an email server, uh, I don't want to run an email server that just lets anyone connect to it and send and receive emails. I want to at least implement, for example, passwords for sending email. Um, even though it's a very basic way to, to secure the system, at least there's one step that makes it slightly more difficult to people, for people to access uh, my email server and use the service. Um, the reason people may uh, attempt to access an email server, for example, is to send spam emails to other services. So they make e uh, money off of sending these horrible emails to, to other people, basically. Uh, another way to attempt to improve security in your organization or yourself is giving the least amount of privilege required to the user uh, whenever they need it. So on a lot of systems, especially in organizations, people have basically full control over their computer and over the systems um, in the organization. And whenever a user has full control, if an attacker attacks that user, then they can potentially... Um, they can potentially... Uh, get access, the same level of access as the user that, that they've attacked. Uh, so trying to restrict the amount of access um, that a user has to only the things that they absolutely need to access uh, will also restrict any attackers that, that attack those people. Uh, there's no single way to ensure security. Um, that's the biggest thing to think. There's, there's no single perfect method to secure your systems. Um, we are finding vulnerabilities in, in all operating systems very, very commonly, um, but there are things you can do to make it much easier or much more likely uh, that you won't be compromised or you won't be a victim of an attack. Uh, most security experts recommend a layered approach to security. And for individuals, that usually means like a personal firewall, um, just good practices about accessing and opening emails and attachments. For organizations, that usually means different security levels, uh, splitting up uh, departments and things like that. So uh, someone in sales doesn't necessarily have access to somebody in finance. 
Um, so a lot of different approaches to security depending on your situation. Um, and layered approaches uh, tend to work uh, pretty well. Uh, cybersecurity is both a technical issue and an education issue. Um, if we have proper education in place, then it becomes much easier to manage security in an organization. Uh, it may be extremely difficult to get into a network through internet-facing devices. If your IT team is, is doing their job well, then it will be very difficult to actually access the internal network from an internet, uh, uh, from an internet facing device. So people who don't know about the organization, all they can do is potentially see a domain name and then they can attempt to attack um, systems associated with that domain name. But if they can't get in that way, then there's not really much else they can do. Um, except it may be extremely easy to get into a network by tricking an employee into clicking an email link. So if the technical side, especially the inter internet facing side, is very, very secure, the weakness are actually the employees who are in the organization. Uh, an administrative uh, person or even the, the CEO, um, if you send them an email saying, hey, look at this new contract, um, they may just download the attachment, open it up, and that attachment contained a virus they didn't know. Um, so now their internal computer is infected, and if they have full access to the system, now they have full access to that computer. Once they have access to that computer, depending on the security policies inside the network, which are usually not very strict, then um, we can uh, potentially access a lot of other devices on the network and eventually take it over or get any information that we want from the network. So um, it's not just a technical problem, right? We can, we can make the technical side relatively secure by using um, industry standards for, for information security. Um, it's also a people issue, making sure that people are actually educated in your organization, in your organization um, uh, so they know how to interact with emails and attachments and um, people asking for information. So internet accessible computers, uh, if a computer is directly accessible on the internet, it will be attacked. Um, I've, I've attached a couple devices directly to, to uh, uh, the internet using a publicly accessible IP address and they are usually attacked within 10 minutes. Um, the longest I've had was about 10 minutes before the system was uh, at least started to be attacked. And this really depends on the service that's running on the system, but um, any computer you put online will start to be scanned within a few seconds basically and start to be actively attacked if it's running a service within a few minutes. Um, so just keep in mind that computers online are constantly being attacked, usually by just automated systems going through and scanning. Um, but uh, that method of automation can sometimes result in getting access to entire networks. So it's, it's quite effective um, and it doesn't really take much uh, resources on the, on the side of the attacker. Uh, any internet accessible computer should at least be protected with a firewall. Um, a few years ago, or at least with Windows XP, we didn't really have firewalls, and then whenever they introduced a, a, a built-in firewall, everyone was concerned about it or hated it or whatever, but it was needed because most people don't install extra firewalls or extra protection for their computers. So uh, the result was that a bunch of different computers were being attacked um, because they had essentially no protection installed whatsoever. Um, so minimum, minimum uh, to protect yourself, turn on your firewall, um, and I'll talk about some other uh, recommendations in a second. Companies themselves should be using things like intrusion detection systems and intrusion prevention systems, setting up um, layers of security where it's, uh, we know that devices are potentially less secure because they're more accessible. Um, and securing them or segregating them from uh, information that should be extremely secure. Um, these systems, you can purchase very, very expensive systems uh, that are configured and have supports and all of these things, um, and they can cost a lot of money, um, or there are some, some free solutions, but then you usually have to have a little bit of technical knowledge to implement them. So there's kind of a trade-off. Uh, free means you have to essentially do it yourself and support it yourself and have the knowledge. Um, paid for means it's going to be quite expensive. Uh, so internal systems, that's kind of, we talked about internet-facing uh, 
uh, systems, and it's, I'm, I'm saying in very general terms here because there's a lot of different potential network configurations. On internal uh, systems, users often have full administrative access to their computers. If a user has full administrative access to the computer, that means they can essentially do anything with the computer they want. The result is if their computer is attacked or if their user account or uh, browser or email or whatever is attacked, then the, the attacker can also get full administrative access to the computer, um, which means that you have a, a potentially huge compromise. Uh, once their computer is taken over, the hacker also has full access to the computer and they will use this computer usually to get access to other systems on the network or just start stealing information directly from that single user. A user's access should be limited. And again, most people don't do this because they don't want to type in a password or extra password or they, um, they just don't like uh, uh, extra security because they think it's annoying. Um, but if we limit the amount of access that our account has and we only give ourselves uh, more access whenever we need it, um, then it makes it much more difficult for attackers to also be able to take over the system. Um, so just quickly some common attacks. Um, now, because everything is kind of going cloud-based or online-based, a lot of attacks are happening on the browser. So many attacks targeting users are browser-based, and malicious or infected website can infect a person's computer through their browser. So if your browser has a vulnerability, then an attacker can potentially use that to install either malware, malware or other programs into your system um, and kind of uh, get access, at least initial access to the system. Um, Always use the most recent version of a browser and its plugins. Um, install some extra security plugins, uh, like, uh, for example, an antivirus that um, scans URLs um, to see if they're malicious or not. Uh, if we use the most recent version of a browser, that will reduce a lot of different attacks that are available online. A lot of people do not keep their browsers up to date, and that is a major reason why they get compromised. Uh, email. An email uh, contains attachments or... Um, Oh yeah, uh, usually an email that contains an, an attachment, that attachment may be malicious. What they're hoping you will do is download that attachment and open it up. As soon as you open it up, you are running um, not only the attachment, but in the background you're running a malicious program that may um, do a number of things. It could either start to uh, steal information from you, it could download other programs. Uh, we'll talk about that later in the malware section. Um, when the attachment is open, the computer is infected, and emails may also contain malicious links. Um, these might not necessarily have viruses or malware in them, but they could, for example, take you to a web page that asks for information. For example, maybe um, it says your account has expired for some website. You click on it, and you go to that website, and then it asks you for your username, your password, and your credit card number and all of this other information as well to restore access to your account. But it's not actually from the website that has that account. They just essentially steal all of your information. So be aware, whenever uh, emails are asking you to update information, they're usually scams. A uh, link to send the browser to an infected website. You may also get a link and it essentially sends you to a website, um, but in the process of sending you to that website, it may have sent you to a malicious website first, your browser downloaded a virus, and then it forwarded you to the original website. In that case, you may be infected, um, but you don't necessarily know anything happened. Another type of very common type of attack is SQL injection. And this is one way that attackers um, get access to, especially database information in databases. SQL injection has been happening for a very long time, basically as long as we've had web pages with forms and databases on the back end. Um, we've been able to do a type of SQL injection attack. And using SQL injection, or using essentially SQL commands in web uh, publicly accessible forms, we can trick the website into giving us more information than it should. Um, in that case, it could be usernames, passwords, social security numbers, credit card numbers, birthdays, all sorts of information uh, can be leaked through SQL injection attacks. Um, it's not a very sophisticated attack and it's very easy to prevent, but many organizations either don't have the resources to check or just don't know to check uh, for SQL injection and that 
is a cause of a lot of our, our problems online. Um, and finally, brute force. There's a lot of other different types of attacks we'll talk about later, but one uh, that I see a lot is brute force attacks. Whenever I put a system online and it's running some sort of service, um, if that service requires a username and password, then someone online will attempt to uh, guess the username and password combination to get into that service. And that basically happens automatically. As soon as you put that system online, someone will start, or a program basically, will start to guess those uh, credential informations. So um, just realize that a username and password isn't necessarily enough. You have to make sure it's secure, uh, difficult to guess. Um, you have to make sure that there are um, other protections than just a, a username and password on that system securing that service. Um, so, like I said before, there is no single method to secure your system. There's a lot of different um, technical methods as well as just um, actions or activities or uh, things that you should be aware of while you're using computers to secure yourself. Um, if you do even basic things, the chance of you being attacked goes down significantly. Uh, tips that'll keep you safer than most people. Um, first off, keep all software up to date. If your software is up to date, then a lot of different viruses can't or have a harder time of attacking your system. Um, if your software is up to date, then certain vulnerabilities that hackers use won't work. Uh, next, use an antivirus and keep it updated just like software. And don't visit suspicious websites or click links or attachments in emails. So that's basically it. Thank you.